Todd Eldridge has captured the national title five times and the world title once. Only the honor of being an Olympic medalist has eluded him. Part of that has to do with injuries and illness that kept him out of the Lillehammer Games four years ago. But now Eldridge is in top form and ready to go for the gold. How jazz are you to be here healthy? Because I know uh, that hasn't been the case in the past. Well, let me tell you, you have no idea. <laughs> no, it's, you know, it's real exciting. Uh, you know, I haven't been here in six years. Uh, so, uh, you know, for me to be here and, and, and to be healthy is, uh, you know, fantastic. When you walk in, you see the ice, you see the rings, you know, you're wearing this coat. What, what are you thinking about? All kinds of things. <laughs> no, I, I really, uh, you know, I, I really think back on '92 and, and my experience at the Olympics then, and and, and how different it is now. Um, you know, I have much more appreciation, I think, for actually being here and being a part of the games. Of course, landed the most difficult jump. Well, this Olympics, it's quad mania, quad talk, quadzilla. Everybody's talking about doing the quad. Um, will you attempt a quad? That's what everyone wants to know about Todd Elgin. <laughs> You know, we'll have to wait and see on yeah. that. Um, you know, it's something that uh, I'm, you know, definitely practicing it, and, and uh, this morning was a little early to do some, but, uh, you know, maybe we'll do some this afternoon. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a question of uh, if I want to risk doing that uh, at this competition or if I want to go out and, and skate uh, a good, clean program and, and really have, uh, you know, a great package for, for that program. Some people say athleticism is taking over a sport that has been defined by uh, uh, being artistic, having grace, uh, uh, beauty and grace. Do you feel that with the quads and are there going to be quints and, <laughs> and all of that? I don't know if we're going to see quints for a little while, but uh, no, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's really just kind of the general progression of any sport. You know, it, the levels go up and up, uh, you know, and, and you know, as long as the level of the, the technical uh, ability of everybody goes up, I think the level of artistic ability needs to go up as well. It's funny, uh, as you were on the ice, uh, Elvis Stoiko, uh, who uh, uh, main competition, was sitting up there watching you, and you waved to him as you went by. Uh, you guys are friends? Oh, yeah. We've known each other for a long time. And my first Worlds was 1990, and I think his was as well. So, uh, and we've been competing together for a long time, and, and uh, you know, we have a mutual respect for each other. You know, I mean, I won World Championships in, in Canada. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, that was a tough year for him, but yet he came back last year and he won it from me. So, uh, you know, we, we, we respect each other's work. So now we're on, it's Thursday, your beginning, the quest for gold. Lights come down, you're on the ice, and the music begins to build. What's going to be going through your mind? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm going to be real nervous. Uh, you know, there's, there's no way around that, basically. Uh, you know, when they call your name and, and you go out to, to skate, uh, you're always a little on edge, a little nervous. But, uh, you know, I'm really going to be, I hope, in, enjoying the moment, you know, being at the Olympics and, and uh, you know, this probably going to be my last chance at it. Uh, you know, I'm going to go out there and, and have a good time and, you know, work my butt off, I guess, <laughs> and, and really try and, try and achieve, uh, you know, I want to get out of this competition. Now, you have had great glory in your career, five national championships, world champion. So you win the gold. Is that the big cherry on the top of the Sunday for you? It's a big cherry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it would it would be definitely. Um, you know, if I don't, then maybe it's a few few nuts sprinkled on there. But uh, you know, it it, uh, it would be great. You know, and, and it's something that uh, you know I've dreamed about for my entire career. And, and uh, you know, if, if it were to happen, uh, you know, I really I really don't know what I would be thinking if I was standing on the podium listening to the anthem. Cherry, this big. <laughs> Todd Eldridge will compete for the first time in Nagano during the men's short program Thursday night on CBS. He certainly has a healthy attitude about the mm -hmm. competition, too, doesn't he? We have a lot more. Well, we're back with five-time U.S. champion Todd Eldridge. And Todd, a disappointment in 92 when you skated in the Olympics, didn't go in 94. I know you are so ready to make your mark here. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I'm for the first time at an Olympics uh, healthy, so that, that feels great. And, and uh, you know, when I, when I came here and I saw the rings and, and got a, a whole feeling of the atmosphere and walked in the opening ceremonies, it just made me feel great. How tough was it in 94 to be sitting at home watching those guys that you had beaten in the past? Let me tell you, it was real tough <laughs> sitting at home and, and watching going, God, I should be there, I should be there. But, uh, you know, knowing that uh, I was skating pretty well and, and that I could make it, but... Uh, you know, that, that kind of fired me up to keep me going for the next four years. And so now you're here and you have your legs under you. How are practices going? How do you feel out there? 
pretty well, actually. Uh, today it was it was fantastic, and, and uh, you know I'm hoping to to build a little bit momentum uh, heading into Thursday and and uh, Saturday. And you've changed the short program. Did you put any changes into the long program since nationals? I changed a little bit in the long program. You know, I I, I rearranged some of the jumps a little bit and and added a little bit more emotion, I think, to the program. And you know, I watched the tape of, of nationals and wasn't that excited with with what I saw. And, and I said, you know, we got to make it a little bit more exciting for Olympics. Mm-hmm. Does it does it challenge your psyche at all to make changes so late in the game right before the Olympics? Not really, no. You know, I, I made changes almost immediately after we got back from nationals, so I had a good two and a half, three weeks to, to get them so that they felt comfortable and, and uh, you know, not, not like it was new. Well, of course, we have to ask you about the, the Q word, <laughs> the claw. <laughs> You've said in the past you didn't think that you'd need it, but you're going to try it. So what made you change your mind? Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I'm still really not set on uh, whether I'm going to try it here or not. Uh, you know, it's something that I'll do in practice and, and then uh, see what happens on Saturday. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's necessary. I, I think that uh, the judges are really looking for a, a good balanced program. If you've got a quad in there, that's a bonus for the technical mark. But uh, you need to back it up with the, uh, the artistic mark as well. Is the quad solid? I mean, are you landing it? Are you doing it? Uh, it's it's been going pretty well, yeah. Uh, I didn't try any this morning; it was a little early. But uh, you know, it's it's been going pretty well, and and um, I'm happy with uh, the way it's going. Todd, I know you'd like nothing more than an Olympic gold medal here, but like the waves off Cape Cod, where Todd is from, his career has had its ups and downs. Todd began skating long ago in a little town called Chatham, Massachusetts. Here's Chris Schenkel with more. Like the sea, there is something permanent about Chatham, Massachusetts. For over three centuries, the fishing industry has provided work to many in this tiny Cape Cod village. And on America's easterly shores, these laborers help to feed our nation. This is the story of one family who has called Chatham home for generations. Some have remained in the town, while others have moved on to different lives. John Eldridge is one who stayed. Each morning, he guides his boat to sea as a commercial fisherman. It is a boat given to him by his two sons, sons who have chosen other professions. But fishing is what John has always known. Well, my father started, he came back after the war, and he started a fishing business with a, with a partner of his in 1949, and he had his own business, Chatham Fisheries, from 19... 19- 55, and we're still, my brother and I still uh, run the business t- today, still going. He's uh, very dedicated to what he's doing, a perfectionist, and I think that's true of uh, most people, in, especially in the New England area, I think, that when they make their mind up what they're going to do, they put heart and soul into it. And I think he has done that, definitely. I think he's right, but I think it also comes from his dad. He works pretty hard at what he does. <laughs> so, he, you know, and Todd saw that as a youngster. And, and he does definitely have that within him. He was only five and a half when he started. And he started in hockey skates. And Todd, within two weeks, wanted to start skating in, in figure skates because he wanted to jump and spin and he couldn't do that in hockey skates so i i had said to john well what do you think should we do this Uh, you know we just spent 35 dollars for hockey skates you know do you think this five and a half year old really knows what he wants so anyway he i blame it on him to this day because he gave me permission to buy the figure skates so i did i got them and he just um he loved it it's just something he he's been driven even from from the age of five and a half At the age of 10, Todd left home to be coached by Richard Callahan. Todd and Richard have been together since. Todd has journeyed far from the peaceful village square in Chatham. Destiny was pulling him to a different calling than that of his father. Todd knew his future rested on the thin blade of a figure skate. And like a true son of the sea, Todd let the winds carry him to greatness. In 1996, Todd rose to the podium as a world champion. It had all started with a stubborn little boy who wanted to jump and spin. It wasn't, well, I suppose it was our decision, but basically it was Todd. He was the one who wanted 
to stay and skate with Richard. Well, at first, we sort of said, well, yeah, it's okay. He'll be back in a few months, you know, this, he'll get tired of it, but no, boy, he stuck with it and uh, very dedicated. The whole point was we were driving two or three days a week off Cape for him to skate, so he would miss school at least twice, twice a week. And, you know, it was, it was very difficult. So he, one day he said to me on the way back from Boston, he said, you know, Mom, this is ridiculous. Why don't I just go to Philadelphia, train, go to school, you know, and I'll, I'll be right there. My wife spent the time, because we were separated for seven years. She lived with Todd, and that was her job. And, and I had to stay home and, and uh, work the business. And that's really the only regret I have, is I wish I could have spent a lot more time in watching him day by day. Todd left his Chatham roots behind, but the town would never forget that little boy with a dream. The Eldridge name was reaching out into the world, and Todd's Cape Cod neighbors were taking that journey with him. Well, for 12 years, we ran a fundraising effort uh, to help raise money locally to keep Todd on the ice. I've always called it a little piece of Americana. It's the kind of thing small towns always did, and it's the kind of thing a lot of small towns still do. In fact, over all these years, there was a team working this effort. Um, and that's something about New England, too, you know? It was a team effort. I mean, there's a lot of town pride and what the kid has done. And I think those of us who are a little bit closer to it understand the sacrifices, not just the sacrifices that he's done, you know, from the fourth grade, seven or eight years his mother was gone, uh, and things like that. But the uh, sacrifices that they made, you know, to put this kid through financial hardships and things like, like this. So it's been, it's been a very rewarding thing. We feel that, you know, we've added our part and uh, he's carrying on and hopefully he can do what his lifetime dream has been.